Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how to make the VGG Net 16 architecture in TensorFlow and Keras. If you'd rather it's in PyTorch, well, check the video description and that video may be out. If it's not, then it's just not out yet. And if you would like to see just the model code, there's always some other setup stuff when we're using a neural network to actually make sure that it's training on a particular data set. If you want to skip straight to the model code, check the timeline and you can just jump straight to that and only watch that piece. Otherwise, I am going to start with some setup stuff, but I'm not going to explain it as much as I have in previous videos. Check out the first 10 minutes, or optionally the full 20 minute video on how to implement the AlexNet architecture. I'll leave that in the description. You can watch that. That really explains all of this other stuff that I'm doing because this setup stuff is going to be the same every time I create one of these CNNs. So check out that video if this stuff is not making sense. I am going to just copy and paste the setup pieces because it's too long to write it all out again. So we're going to import TensorFlow datasets as TFDS, just to get our dataset. And then we can load up a train and test data set with this code here. Basically, I'm saying the first 80% is going to go to the train. I don't know why there's that bar there. The first 80% is going to go to the train, and the second 20% or 80% onward is, uh, is going to go to the test. So that's going to download it there. And we're downloading the cat's first dogs data set. So technically, what uh, VGGNet was trained on, and most of these CNNs, they were trained on ImageNet, which is a thousand different classes, and so you would end in a softmax. For us, we're just going to make it a little simpler, easier to train, uh, and so we're going to do a sigmoid as the last uh, as the last piece. Although the last piece is really just always whatever you want to solve your particular problem. Okay, so that should be downloaded, and then we can take a look at the training and test data sets length. We have. 18,610 observations in the training set and 4,652 in the test set. Now we can take a loop through the train data set with for x and y in the train data set, we'll print x is shape and just y numpy, that should be the label. And we're gonna grab this variable image one so that we can plot it in a moment. We can see, and since we broke, we only looked at the first one, we got the height of 262, a width of 350 and three channels. So it's an RGB image. And uh, this label, uh, this is y.numpy, it was a one, saying that this corresponding image that this is, is a dog. Dogs are ones and cats are zeros. Uh, we can plot this with import matplotlib.py plot as plt, and a plt.imshow with the image is going to show this dog. And so you can see that it's uh, that height of about 250 as we saw, width of 350, and color channels. Okay, uh, there's some stuff we have to do to these TensorFlow datasets. Again, these are TensorFlow datasets instead of NumPy arrays, so you may not have seen them before. Um, again, if you haven't, then I'd recommend watching some of my other videos. We do import TensorFlow as TF, and we're going to make a normalized image function, and it's actually going to take the image and the label. You'll see why shortly. And then we're going to return the tuple of casting that image to a float and dividing it by 255. That's the main purpose of this function. And just return the label as is. Uh, as you saw, the channels, or sorry, the height and width are not standard, as in they're not all the same through the data set. If we were to do this, well, actually it should be the same one every time, uh, but if you let this go, I'm not gonna do it right now, but if you saw the second image, then you would see that it had a different height and width. And so the first thing we have to do, um, or one of the first things we have to do is resize each of the images and so we're going to use tf.image.resize to image, uh, basically change all of those images to a square height and width of 224 by 224, which is what these uh, uh, VGGNet and these other common architectures are used to. Okay, so we're going to map a bunch of different things to this train data set. I'm going to just put it all in here. And so basically train data set is going to have mapped the resize function. So resize all of them. And this num parallel calls, this is always just the auto tune. It's it's for um, optimization purposes. Now for the shuffle val here, basically this value, this shuffle val should be the length of the train data set. But here, if you're running it on a free collab, you might want to divide it by a big value just because it will use less RAM that way and it'll be faster. Uh, you also have to figure out a batch size and that greatly depends on you know how quickly you want to be training, how uh, what GPU you're using, what RAM you have in your GPU and normal. And so I figured out that a batch size of four with this data set and with um, on the free collab version that it works pretty well. You might want to play around with that. 
Uh, and so after you've figured out these two values, those are hyperparameters, you want to shuffle with the shuffle value that you created, and you want to batch them. And then there's this prefetch thing, which is just for optimization purposes. Uh, there's some stuff we have to map to the test dataset as well. And so we'll test dataset.map pretty much the same things. We'll resize and normalize and then batch because there's really no reason to shuffle. In train, you want to shuffle all of the stuff before you batch it. Uh, but here you just want to, uh, you want to do this stuff and then batch it because there's no reason to shuffle. And then this prefetch thing is again, just for optimization purposes. Okay, and let's just take a loop through the training data set for image and label in the train data set, print the image.numpy.shape and the label.numpy, the same thing as before. But you should see now a batch of four, 224 by 224 by three images. And so technically this is really a batch of images and this is a batch of labels. Uh, and again, these labels, now it's the, it's all four of these things because we're actually giving the numpy this is that actual value of it. And it's just the first one's a dog, and then the next three are cats in that batch of four images. Okay, now we're actually gonna create the model. So hello to everyone that just jumped straight to this. So we'll do from tensorflow.kires.models import model, implying we're using the functional API. We're not gonna use the sequential at all, actually. We'll do from tensorflow.kires.layers import star. So we'll just grab all the layers. And we're going to do most of this work in just a function. Again, you could actually make this a model or a layer itself. But here with this, it's not too bad. And we're just going to create a function that returns one block of VGG. So not that returns the whole model of VGG, but one block, which is essentially a couple layers that all pretty much do the same thing. And so VGG is just made up of a bunch of different blocks and we'll see what these are. So we're gonna define a function VGG block that just basically gets a block of VGG and it takes in X, which is whatever X happens to be at the time. At first it is the input. And then after that, we're gonna see, it'll be basically the start of the, the previous block and the start of the previous block and so on. So you can keep adding these blocks to X. And so num layers, We'll see what this is shortly, but basically it's uh, it's how big your block is going to be, how many layers your block is going to be made up of. And out channels, which is starting to be 64 because the first one is going to be 64, but your the convolutions that will happen in this VGG block, uh, you specify that with out channels. And so you want that as a parameter as well. Now we're going to do for just underscore because we don't actually need the variable, but for anything in the range of the num layers. So for each, however many num, however many layers that we want in this block, basically how many different convolution, batch norm, and ReLU layers do we want in this block? Uh, technically, they don't use batch norm. They don't even use any normalization, I believe. Uh, but we want to use batch normalization because they probably would if they knew it existed uh, at the time that they were making this and they explored it. So we're going to do set x equal to the conv 2d. And we're setting x equal to this because it's going to be, again, using the functional API, we're going to basically just keep adding to x how you would normally using the functional API. So we're going to add to x uh, the conv2d of out channels, so however many filters that we want. And it's always going to be a 3 by 3, and so we just put 3 there, and then a 1. So a convolution with however many out channels we want, however many filters we want, uh, it's going to be a 3 by 3 window, and it's going to be just a stride of 1. And we're also going to have that padding is going to be same so that the dimensions are not reduced even with this 3 by 3 kernel. And we're going to put of x there again. So for, this, uh, for the functional API, we keep building onto it. Uh, we're going to add a batch normalization. Again, technically they don't use it, although it would be helpful if they did. It'll just make it faster. And then you can add the ReLU here. And so x is a the layer of ReLU of x. You can do it like that as well. And then outside this four, because this is however many convolutional layers that we want, basically, we will add a pooling, and it's always the max pooling 2D of a height width window of two. And then we want that stride to be two, sorry, two as well. And we add that to X and then just return X. 
this is the main function that we're going to use and we're just going to keep adding these blocks particular blocks with varying values of these parameters keep adding them to the input and then to the previous block to the previous block until we get um, basically to the end at the end you'll have to do something a little bit different with like a flatten and some dense layers uh, but this is going to be all the convolutional uh, and max pooling stuff okay so now we can build our model with we're going to start an input with an input uh, is equal to the input layer of, sorry, I should put this up, input layer of the shape 224 by 224 by three. And then we do block one is made up of a VGG block. We're gonna have a bunch of these with the input because that's what we're starting it as. That's that X that we're gonna keep joining together. And num layers is going to have two. So we have two of these conv batch norm Braylu layers. And then we have out channels starts at 64. And technically we don't have to put that because that's this is the stuff that I had as the defaults, but we're gonna just put it there anyway for clarity. And we're not gonna do of x here because it's actually this function, the VGG block is actually attaching it to x. So you'll see in a moment how that works. And then we just make a bunch of these layers basically and join them together. If we do block two is VGG block, not of the input, uh, we actually adjusted this thing in block one because we returned x and we set block one to equal this. And so what we actually want to pass here now is that that previous layer, which is block one. And num layers in this one is going to be two. So that's the same. And out channels is now going to uh, double to 128. Now we can just do that again with a third block block underscore three is the VGG block of block two and num layers this time it's going to have three of those conv batch norm ravu blocks and out channels is again going to double to 256. We can do this again block four is going to be the VGG block given block three num layers is three out channels doubles again to 512 and then basically here at the end they just do that again and so block five is the VGG block given block four, and then num layers is three, out channels is five, 12, exactly the same way. And now after that, we've done, basically got the input, done a bunch of conv batch norm ReLU max pooling blocks. And after all of this, we are just going to flatten whatever's left. Left. So we'll do flat is equal to a flatten of block five, because that's uh, carrying on this variable forward. It's flatten of, sorry, it's not right like that. Flatten of block five, like the functional API would do. And then we do some fully connected layers because now it's flattened. So we'll do FC one is equal to a dense of 4096 with an activation immediately equal to ReLU. And that's of flat, our previous variable. Uh, I don't think they use any dropout here, but you could use it if you wanted to. Uh, we're not going to. Make another fully connected layer. FC underscore two is equal to dense of 4096. And activation is equal to ReLU again. So really that same exact thing. And that's of FC underscore one. And then we just need to make our output. And that output is whatever you wanna make for your model, whatever it's trying to do. For us, it's solving a cat versus dog problem. So we're just gonna do one sigmoid to make it a probability. We'll do output is equal to dense of one with an activation equal to a sigmoid. And then of FC two. And then our model is fully defined by the model where the inputs is that input variable that we left here at the beginning. And then our outputs is that thing that's been built this whole time. It's been, it was started as input. We passed the VGG block, went through all these blocks. It's all these variables, adding all the way, getting until FC2 is our final one. And then actually output after that. So outputs equals output. And there you go, that's our model. You can actually call a model.summary on this. And it's gonna take a little bit because it has to go through and build all these things, but it's not too bad. Uh, if you, if we look through the whole thing here, we should see a input layer of the image and then the convolution. We see a couple, uh, two convolutions, that's the one block. And then we see the pooling. We see convolutions, batch norm, pooling, 
Con batch norm pooling, you're going to see a lot of these. So I'm just going to skip down. And then eventually we get to the point where it's, the max pooling turns it to a 7x7x512. Seven by seven by and then we just flatten whatever's remaining. We do a fully connected from that flatten to the 4096 to another 4096. And then for our problem, we're just doing a sigmoid of 1. And for this, I am not going to explain much further the training behind it. That was how to make the model. Because again, in the previous AlexNet video, I did show how to do the remaining stuff. If you want to see it again here, I will copy and paste it. If you want to see how to do it from the AlexNet video, then I would watch that now. So we'll loop through again here. We'll do for image and label in the trained data set, but print putting the model or giving the image to through the model, computing the numpy of that and looking at its shape and label.numpy for that is going to be for a batch of four, it puts that batch through the model and it gets a probability for each of those. And if you wanted, you could actually remove the shape here because it's as simple as four probabilities. And we see the actual for those, see here it's not trained. And so it's just uh, roughly 50%, which is kind of expected. And now we're going to go ahead and train it. So copy this stuff in. Uh, we're going to use the atom optimizer, the binary cross entropy, and we're going to compile with that binary cross entropy, use that optimizer with atom with a learning rate starting at 0 0.001 it will work pretty well since I've done this before. And we're going to add an early stopping so that we can train this a little better. Um, we just monitor the loss or val loss if you prefer. Patience is five. If it, uh, if it found a minimum and it didn't get better, it didn't beat that minimum after five tries, then it, uh, it gives up. And then we just fit this thing. So hopefully we have no errors here. It should just start training. And it's gonna be really, really, really slow. Like this is a big model. You saw how big it was, 134 million parameters. That's a lot even today. Um, and so this is gonna be take pretty much forever on the CPU. Uh, it would take a little less time on the GPU. Uh, even then it would take quite a while. And if you wanted to really train this well, you might want to do what it says, which is upgrade to Colab Pro Plus, uh, maybe use a faster learning rate, use a smaller batch size, um, and other stuff that you could do to try and speed this up. As you can see, it would take forever. That is the end of the video. Okay, I hope that was helpful. That was how to make the VGG net from scratch in TensorFlow. And yeah, hope that was helpful. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.